Welcome back to this video. This is the Full Stack Ninja. And today we are going to be looking at how to cr automatically create data visualization charts using Data Mallet. Now, Data Mallet is a Python library which I develop or I am developing. And, you know, if you are interested in being a part of this library, do reach out and we can see in what ways you can actually contribute to it. But the concept of this library or the philosophy of it is for people, data scientists, to become more efficient in their job. It's a tool developed by data scientists for data scientists to help expedite the data science workflow. And so data mallet is useful for creating data visualization. So all you have to do is specify your data frame, your pandas data frame, and you can specify one of a few settings here and there, and it will create every single type of visual that can be created for that data set in less than 10 lines of code. It all depends on what things you're trying to specify. At the bare minimum, all you have to do is specify the data frame and it will automatically create the visuals for you. Data Mallet is built on top of Scikit-Learn, Plotly, Pandas, NumPy, and SciPy. So, but today we're gonna just focus on how you can automatically create data visuals using Data Mallet. And so for that, we're gonna go into our code editor here. Now here, I have a bunch of data sets in this folder. And what I'm interested in looking at today is the tips data set. So, Let's print what this tips data set looks like. Um, I believe a whole bunch of people would actually be familiar with this. And so essentially what it is, is it's a very basic data set that looks at people that come visit a restaurant and looks at, okay, how much was their total bill? How much tip did they provide? Was the person paying for the bill, male or female? Was the person a smoker and non-smoker? What day of the week was it? What time of the day was it? And what was the size of the group? And so very interesting data set. And I believe it's a very good example. It can start as a very good example of what you can actually do with this library. So moving on, um, let's initialize this library. So I'm importing this autoplot class from the visualization module in Data Mallet. I'm just going to instantiate it here and provide what I want my data frame to be. Now with this, with actually just providing this information, I can actually create my visuals from this. Um, and you can see this is, you know, all I have to do is just call autoplot.show and this should be able to create our visual. So let me go ahead and first of all, do this. Let me show this functionality. So autoplot, if I call the create the chat types, this would show me what chat types are available based on this data set. So let's run that first. Let's just have a visual of what that looks like. Now you can see here that based on, you know, this type of data, you can see we have numeric data. We have um, categorical or object columns, same here, categorical objects, same here, same here. And we also have numeric data as well. So based on this, this auto plot class, and I can go into detail into how this library works. I can actually walk you through the code. Um, but based on this type of data, this auto plot class is able to see that, okay, scatter plot would make sense, a correlation plot. That shows correlation between all the numeric columns would make sense. Um, density contour, density heat maps, um, histogram, box plot, violin plot, tree map, some bus chart, bar, and pie chart. So based on this type of data sets, this, this is what the library, the auto plot class actually suggests. And this is, you know, based on my experience with creating visuals over time or what kind of visuals make sense in what scenario. So actually you just make this, what we need to do now is give it a file name. And let's just say basic, we can call it basic. You can give it any string name you want. You can also pass this, let's say list of figures because what this show method does is 
based on you know the data frame and whatever parameters you specified it, it actually returns a list of plotly graph objects or plotly figures and it also creates an html file here with the name you provide in the file name and with those two so it creates the html file so that you can actually go through the the visuals yourself but it also returns a list of the plotly images so that way you know if you want to use um those chats in some other parts then you can go ahead and do that like you want to use it somewhere else in your workflow you can easily do that which is you know awesome if you ask me so with that done um let's just in less than 10 lines of code you are able to create all the visuals you want so before we actually run this let's go ahead and look at let's include just some basic charts to make sure they are there so let's include scatter plots because by default since we've already seen that okay scatter plots is a type is a type of chart which is allowed by default i set it up such that by default it doesn't create scatter plots because you know it could be a lot of images created but now i'm deliberately saying okay i want to create scatter plots okay so let's run this and see what the output will look like now you can see here we have this basic.html created so we can just open it with our favorite browser so here um, when we open up this the html file which was created we can see here we have scatter plots and the way it works is it creates you know just scatter plot charts in a non-repeat fashion across the different um numeric columns that exist so here we have scatter plot of total bill versus tip and you you notice you notice that it actually colors it by the gender or sex in this case um we have total bill versus tip with and here we color it by the smoker whether it's smoker or not total views bill versus tip colored by the time of the day or the day of the week rather and the color here by time um, then now we look at total bill versus size colored by the gender colored by whether you're a smoker or you're not a smoker colored by the day of the week colored by time now we look at the tip versus size colored by the sex tip versus size colored by smoker colored by day of the week tip versus size colored by time of the day and at this point we are done with all the scatter plots that can be created for this data set in its current state so next we go ahead and look at density contour charts um, we look at total bill versus tip and we look at total bill on the z-axis there are much more settings um which you can provide for density contour chart um, but you know i didn't do that because i'm trying to be under 10 lines of code but you know i did specify some very good defaults and we can definitely dive into what those actual default parameters are uh, so we look at density contour again here for total bill versus tip but now with total bill on the z-axis total view versus tip with tip on the z-axis total view versus tip with tip on z-axis as well here you can look at all of this and we color it by different things so the smoker the time it really does something very extensive in this case with the density contour charts so we have all of these attributes here all this now we look at the heat map so total bill versus tip total bill on the z-axis total bill versus tip with tip on the z-axis total view versus tip with size on the z-axis and goes on and on you know with the density heat map changing all of this next we go on to the histograms okay and so we have the histograms here and we can have we have the distribution for total bill we have the distribution for tip and we have the distribution for size next and with histograms you can actually specify a whole bunch of attributes as well but i just decided to go with the defaults next we have our box plots okay so it's looking at the total bill 
spread across the sex categories. We can also specify if you want to segregate this by color as well. So you can also specify what color you want. You can specify whether you want the box plots to have to show these additional points or not. So there are lots of other attributes, but stay with the defaults still give us good values and good results. So this is looking at the total bill across small car categories, total bill across the day of the week. So we can see here Sunday as you know people tend to be more generous on Sunday in terms of their spending. Um, total bill across time. Now we are looking at the tips. So you can see all of this, all these charts. This are, we still have much more box plots. All of this were created with under ten lines of code, as including the library imports. So here what we have, we have our violin plots. Okay, so we have our violin plots here and you can also specify if you want these points to be shown or not. You can specify color for a violin plot and in future videos, I will go into, you know, details of the different attributes that actually exist that you can specify. But for now, you know, this is just a quick video trying to keep it short, simple and sweet. And so I'm just going to leave it like this. And here yeah, you have all these violin chats. Of course, you know, with a library like this, you'd have outcomes that look a little off in some cases. Um, but I see this being useful as a very first step in your exploratory phase where you can just quickly make, you know, your exploration very, very easily. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward if you ask me. Okay. So next we look at the tree maps. Okay, so looking at total bill across first the gender, that's male and female, and then whether you're a smoker or non-smoker. So clearly we can see that um, the male customers in the restaurant tend to spend more money. And if they were non-smokers, they tend to spend, you know, even much more money. It's probably because, you know, they are probably way less smokers than smokers. I don't know just a guess right but this is what a tree map is very useful for showing hierarchical data and that's what's done here so it looks at the tip across gender that's the sex and the smoker um, this is just a good default it could have gone into much more detail as well um, but you know using the default values this is what it is right now now this looks at the size now this looks like the sunburst chart. So sunburst charts and tree map are very, very um, similar when it comes to, you know, representing hierarchical data. Um, but, you know, like I've said in some of my other videos, if in doubt, always use a tree map ahead of a sunburst chart. Um, but yeah, this, they're essentially showing the same information. Okay, so we have all the sunburst charts here. And of course, we have pie charts as well. So total bill across the sex segments. Okay, so we have, you know, men or male people contribute 67.5% and women contribute less here. Uh, when it comes to total bill across smokers and non-smokers, so non-smokers are 60%. They contribute in terms of expenditure, 60% to the restaurant. Uh, when we look at total bill across time segments, we have 75.8% um, for dinner and a lesser percentage for lunch. Um, so, you know, you get the drift. All of these visuals was created with under 10 lines of code. And because, you know, like I said before, this library is built upon scikit-learn, built upon Plotly Express, Pandas, and essentially these are Plotly images you can easily just come here let's say you've seen some visuals you know that make sense to you i want to include it in a report you can come here click on this and you can easily download it as a png okay and to me that is you know really significant in what this library can actually do for you so um yeah um do check it out you can i'll add the link to this library data mallet 
um, there's the icon, <laughs> very um, interesting icon. I got someone on iPhone Fiverr to do that for me. So right now we're in version 0 0.19.0, but I do work on this, you know, on my free time on the weekends and I try to improve it as much as I can. So by the time you come to this site, it may not be version 0 0.19 any longer, but it will still be, it will still have the same functionality and you know it will keep improving with time so if you're interested in being a part of this library do let me know and yeah we can discuss how we can collaborate on this okay thank you very much for your time and i'll see you in the next video if you enjoyed this content please remember to like um add your comments tell me what you liked what you didn't like and uh yeah i'll see you in the next video